I don't like plastic decoys. When I was 15, we moved to Knott's Island in the Outer Banks. And Mr. Romy Waterfield, he was a member of my daddy's church, and he gave us a decoy as a present when we first moved there. And I didn't have money for no decoys. I had one plastic decoy I found in, in the dump. That's when you could go scavenge. But it uh, it was broke. I still got it sitting over there somewhere. I use it for a pattern once in a while. I had a lot of wood in the backyard from a previous preacher's kid, you know, and he carved a little bit, Paul Maynard. And, uh, um, I just got hooked on it, and the more I made, the more I got hooked, and I don't want the landfills filled with plastic, and everybody knows that you shoot them, they're going to sink. Wood, it ain't going to sink. Cork ain't going to sink. Styrofoam ain't going to sink. You might tear it up a little bit. What's your it is what it is. Car? Ruddy duck. Ruddy duck. You yes, like sir. Ruddy duck? Yes, sir. It was the first duck I ever got, first duck I ever shot. Um, I like their attitude, their cartoonish like desire when they're prancing around on the water and just having fun. I mean, they they got attitude, and I got attitude, so we go together, you know. The ruddy's just my favorite. I love all species, but, you know, we all have our favorite. This is a question that causes arguments like Chevy and Ford, but I'll say Juniper. I love the smell of it. Um, I love the way it just carves so easy like butter. To me it does. Um, Tupelo is real excellent if you want to spend more money on it, more detail. It's better for a decorative bird in my opinion. They're all opinions in my opinion on what's best and what not. Eyes, no eyes. I prefer no eyes because I like the old fashioned blocks. But uh, it is what you want. You know, it's like you do it the way you want. Just like when you go hunting, you're going to do stuff the way you want. It's to what makes you feel happy, what makes you happy. That's why I do what I do that makes me happy. Yeah. Mr. Romy Waterfield. Um, well, he, uh, he lived in Knott's Island most of his life. He was in the war. He also was a game warden, or worked with waterfowl. And he spent, took most of the time to teach me how to do what I did, since I didn't agree with schooling and stuff. The way the politics of school ran, I decided to go homeschool. And he took me in and taught me how to carve, and they counted it as a credit. It was history, and it was also woodworking. So I did a little thing for a project for class, and it was step by step of him carving a ruddy duck. Shows a lot of other stuff, um, decoys and stuff of Knott's Island and Currituck area. And he just influenced me the most because he sat down and put an impression on the young kid's mind that you can do anything you want to do as long as you put your mind to it and work hard at it. And he said, do what you do, love and doing what you do, it's not work. And that's the way I feel. I love doing what I'm doing, so it's not work. And Rummy Waterfield and his brothers were excellent carvers. Um, the late Arnell Waterfield and Fred Waterfield. And uh, he, their stuff, almost identical, but certain things set them apart. Just like the paint, basically, you know. Most of them, their wives carved, painted, and they carved. And Curtis Waterfield, he did decoratives, and his son, uh, he painted, Wayne Waterfield painted. Um, I like to call it a, more of a rustic folk art. It's nothing fancy, it gets the job done. It, they're, they're hunters, they're, they kill, they're made to kill. You know, I mean, they ain't gonna win competitions, but when you're out there hunting, it's not all about um, 
my birds look prettier than your birds, it's how many ducks you're going to kill with your birds. Oh, I'd have to say the ruddy. The ruddy now? Yes, sir. But well, I've got quite a few cameras backs and uh, redheads out there floating around. What do you consider the most difficult part of carving? Um, for me, it's the paint. Um, I'm not the best painter. I do. That's probably one reason why I try to stick to the old style blocks. Got the good old Carolina lines going on that everybody loves. But paint's the hardest for me. I'd rather get my hands dirty and start carving and sanding and painting. A lot of people hate the sanding part of it. Right. What do you consider to be the essential equipment for carving? Well, you must have a bandsaw and a good sharp knife. If you use a However you rough it out, either hatchet, spoke shave, um, draw knife, or even an angle cut grinder. And you must have a good sharp knife to, to carve with. And, uh, Do you re-sharpen your knives? Yes, sir. I, pretty much, I don't ever have to sharpen them. I just keep them, keep just keep them home real good with my strut and just a couple passes each. 15, 20 minutes carving, it stays sharp. It all depends if I just want to sit there and whittle it out and have fun, or if I want to rush through it because it is nothing but just a worker. It's not going to go on a shelf. I got some cheat tools. I like my disc grinder, my sander, I can whip a body out with my disc grinder in about three minutes. Oh, wow. um, hatchet is going to take you about 15, 20 minutes. Head, you're looking at 30 minutes or so if it's hand carved. But if you're using power tools, you can get one done start to finish, paint everything about an hour for basic Carolina style gunners. That's awesome. So, I guess how long does it take you to carve a head? Uh, anywhere 30 minutes to an hour depending how what you want or if you're not distracted and got no worries or stressors of the day you just get out there you, you can carve them as fast as you want but it's all to the way you want it to look too Absolutely. so what do you think is the hardest bird to carve whoa have to be one I only uh, attempted one of, and that's the mandarin duck. Right. And I gave up on that thing a long time ago. It was firewood the week after I started. Yeah, that's a... But uh, I do not like painting wood ducks. Oh, really? Yeah, I do not a lot like of colors. Too many colors uh, make my eyes cross sometimes. <laughs> If a novice wanted to start carving birds, what would they need uh, to start with? Well, access to a bandsaw, if you don't have them, that's fine. As long as you got access to one, there's a lot of people who buy blanks online. But a lot of that is junk wood when you buy a blank. It's like real super knotty, it's hard pine. Um, once in a while, you can get some good two flow blanks or you ain't going to find that many uh, juniper blanks online because we like to keep that wood down here. <laughs> I think it depends on where you're from. A lot of collectors, they want uh, around here, they want the old something that is historical and nostalgic to their region. You go up north, you're going to see a whole lot more decorative going on. Around here, we want something that looks like it's been in Granddaddy's shed for a hundred years and you found it. Yeah. Um, I've done canvas um, since the beginning. And it's, I don't do as many as I used to because uh, it can be tricky. 
and arthritis and carpal tunnel don't allow me to pull and stretch it as good as I used to. I've done canvas, I'd say, the whole 26 years I've been going. Is canvas harder than zinc carbon? I'm sure it is. Well, it gets, it's not hard, it's frustrating because there's a lot of stretch, tack, staple, undo, stretch, uh, tack, staple, until you get all the wrinkles out or as many as you're going to get out. Absolutely. Some beginners like to start off with foam. I don't recommend it. I tried my hand in it when I got a bunch of free blocks. It's just too much work for what you're going to get out of it. Absolutely. So if you're going to don't want to do wood, I recommend trying to learn how to do canvas because you still got a high quality product that you can pass down to your generations down the road. Well, it depends. Uh, a lot of times I'll use exterior house paint on my working birds and I use cheap uh, acrylic paints and artist acrylics. Uh, for some of them, but I'll hit them with a uh, dull coat to protect them. But uh, for ones I know that's going on, on the shelf, it's going to be just plain Jane cheap acrylic from Walmart or any craft store. But for working birds, I use exterior latex and sometimes the uh, Ronin oils that I can get my hands on. Yes, sir, it's my preference. I'll use uh, anything I can get my hands on sometimes. But basswood, if you're going to be carving with just knives, I don't recommend it. If you're going to use power tools, basswood is fine. Two plus fine. It's best for power carving with the forward on and stuff like that. But if you have a good two plus knife, it will, you know, it carved easy as butter. Um, I got a little piece of uh, regular northern white cedar here, and it it oh, just wow. it's like butter, and it smells pretty good too. Yeah, yeah, that's the smell when I came in. And then I got a piece of tuplo. It's real nice and easy carving too. It's got tight grain, but the cost is way. And here's a little piece of juniper, and it carves like butter too, in my opinion. Some people don't like it because it will split on you if you get too much of a bite, but any wood will pretty much. But this is basswood. It's easy carving some, but you're going to get in the center of it. It's going to be a little bit harder. For more details, I recommend you use a portal tool or something. They're all good woods. Um, try to stick with the soft woods. You don't go with mahogany or oak or something like that. Keep that stuff for your kills. Yeah. Just take your time. Uh, study up on the species and the style you want to do first and uh, keep at it you know there's a lot of right ways there's a lot of wrong ways but you can just make do what makes you happy that's what I did I mean some people they're like look at that piece of junk sitting over there well, don't hurt my it style. don't hurt my feelings a bit because well, there's a lot of people that it depends on your preference you know but if you're going to start out carving don't get frustrated when um, you're putting on your head that you've carved 30 minutes an hour two hours and you forget to put a pilot hole in when you're nailing it to the block and you're splitting the net don't get frustrated gorilla glue that sucker put it aside and make a cane out of it but uh, um, just take your time and get a good pattern if you can't draw a pattern, get a good pattern. There's a lot of good books out there. The Godin books are really good, but that's if you want to make a little bit higher end decoy. But for beginners, I say the Hillman books are pretty good. Hillman Anthony Hillman. So do you deal with wrestle coating or anything like that? Um, 
Yeah, I messed with the uh, with a little bit. Walnut shells right there. That's on the chrome and it's pretty pretty tough. Yeah, that's a uh... darn near bulletproof as Ron Snow would say. <laughs> Don't know how to shoot. You need to stay home. <laughs> Just like them dag one. Uh, maybe I shouldn't say it, but I'm going to them uh, junior duck commanders out there. They see Duck Dynasty. Yes, yeah, a good show, good ethics. But hey, don't go out there and ruin it for everybody that's been hunting in the same spot over and over. And you see a dag one flock of something flying over and you just get out of there and start blasting. Pay respect to the ones that have been there before. Well, I'd have to say the lines. We got nice crisp lines and uh, basically it's our form, I would have to say. Uh, yeah, you get it some in the Chesapeake ducks or um, Maryland birds, you'll see similar, but most of theirs are turned on the way. Most of ours are chopped out with a hatchet. Okay. I try to, when I do use eyes, that's something I don't do much. They frustrate me because trying to get on place is the hardest but I always try to get it as close to what's on the pattern. If I drew the pattern, I'll try to put it what looks the best according to the pics I've seen of uh, the real bird. You can't go by someone else's work to, for eye placement. You must look at the actual species um, in a live pic photo or video to judge that. Come on to the Ruddy Shack, I'll teach anybody. Okay. When will you start your pattern book? Uh, that one there right now is on hold because I started drawing up some of my patterns and then I got a bunch of orders in and I'm trying to find more information out on publishing. And I'm not good with stuff on the internet so anybody that knows anything about how to get something published and costs and stuff, please let me know. I don't know. I've done thousands of decoys over the years. Uh, Any one that you remember the most? Maybe the one that gave you the most trouble? Well, not the most trouble. I'd say the most fun. Some people might be like, oh, I'm getting into buying. You're just having more fun, a different kind of fun, but I'd say I made a golden eye, um, canine uh, urn for uh, Michael Loon. I believe he's a member. If not, he needs to be. He's a real avid hunter. And uh, that one there, I never did many golden eyes. And I never did a uh, urn. Um, I don't really hollow much of my decoys out. So that one there, it was a, it was a learning point in my career. You know, I had to study it a little bit more because I wanted to do justice for him and his uh, his lost hunting companion. So that one there, I put more hours into that deco one decoy than I probably put into a dozen of my record. Thing a person needs to know. It's going to take time. You need to practice. And uh, don't try to make something like someone else's. Make it the way you want and it will be right. Everybody's got their opinions on how to do it. For competitions and stuff, you need to go by them guidelines. But if you're making a gunner for yourself or a present, it's do the best you can until you can't do any better and it would be just fine.